working with different people. Can you tell us just a little bit about your creative process when, when you're choreographing or directing? What's your process like? How do you like to work with your artists? Tell us about it. Right. Um, well, <laughs> I'll start with dance. Dance, dance is, um, uh, I, I'm a bit old fashioned in that I, uh, and because I came up through a classical system, I, for a long time, started just with the, mu with the music, really. Um, particularly making things that are non-narrative. It's about listening to the music incredibly carefully and, and looking at structure. And, and I feel very lucky to be a musician as well. So I, uh, I mean, I'm, to call myself a musician now is actually a massive lie. I, pl I used to play an instrument. I trained as a singer and stuff, but I don't, I mean, I couldn't, I'm useless now. But anyway, it means that I can read a score and I, I know how scores are laid out. Um, and uh, and I think that's a very useful way for looking at how to structure things. And I'm really into rhythm and how that works and rhythm across various different parts. Um, so that's starting with a, with a piece that's non-narrative, it's about the score. And actually weirdly with a narrative piece, more and more now I'm very lucky to be able to to just work with commission schools and so mm -hmm. the thing that I do is work with a composer very closely and first of all get the narrative sometimes with a dramaturg and sometimes with with just with myself um, and even if you're adapting something or you're making something up from scratch it's looking at the versions of story that will work best with dance I mean, because dance is brilliant at some versions of storytelling I mean, it's absolutely useless at other sorts so there's lots of bits in ballets where people run on with a piece of paper and wave it wildly and somebody looks at it and goes and then they all kind of run off and you're like what was on the piece of paper and if you didn't read the program you're like none the wiser yeah. and i've played lots of those roles where i run on with pieces of paper or i've opened things and gone Ugh, and then given it back to somebody with a large beard um and for me i think it's really important that people know what's happening in dance without having to read a program uh and sometimes that means I work a lot with text in things. I quite like mixing up forms. So working with text, working with song and dance together. But um, it's, it's then taking that narrative structure and working with a composer and really putting those together and trying to be very controlled about it. I think particularly when you're looking at a full length ballet, it always feels a bit daunting. It feels like there's this massive thing. Um, and you're looking at maybe two and a half hours of the steps which can be a bit huge mm. and um and so what to try and do is is also put timings on it work out work out the big turning points the key points is that a duet is it a solo is it when are the bits for the quarter ballet you know and it always depends on how big the company is but there's there's that uh and then you break it down and so you start with those bits and, and do that but more and more as well i like to work with somebody with a team I, the thing that I think is really important is that a the team at the front of the room, as in your your, your assistant, if you're lucky enough to have an assistant with something, um, your dramaturg or writer that you're working with, the designer and the composer, and all of those all of those people that sit at the front when you're a dancer, that bank of people, um, need to be very unegoy. They need to be very open to each other's ideas and I kind of quite like to have lots of people that are better than me because then you can just steal their ideas and pretend that they're yours <laughs> I think it's, that's my modus operandi in life is like I'll have that <laughs> essentially nicking stuff is how I've got where I am um, <laughs> and, <laughs> you know what I mean? um, and but I also think that there's a really real there's a real tradition in classical dance that the dancers are quite mute within it um, partly because dancers in the main don't talk which is one of those it's part of the form um, but is trying to work with them so that they have ownership I think that's just great I, I like dancers particularly now going around all over the shop making work often after the first night you get on a plane and fly away um, and you leave a whole bunch of dancers with it and if they feel and when I go there, it's a very weird what happens with a company. So I, I really like to make it that in the, the last sort of 10 days or so, 
it doesn't matter if I'm in the room or not. I mean, clearly I am because I'm a control freak, but um, trying to make it that everybody, it has its own internal structure. I like making companies of people. And even in going into a company, the piece has an, its own kind of internal uh, surface tension so that everybody's contained within that. And that's how I like to do that. I mean, what's, what's funny is with a play, it's very different in that there's a text. Unless you're working, I mean, I'm working on a, a new play at the moment, which I've not, it's only the second, third time I've done, done that. And I've not done one in the way, the nature of how we're working on this one, um, where we're not adapting something. It's an entirely new, new play. But you've got a text to be going from. And so then uh, I, used to, I used to be horrible. And I was always taking the make where people really just interrogate the text, go back to the text. And now, I'm, now I, I found myself saying, just we'll interrogate the and I'm just like, God, I've become that person I just used to constantly take the mickey out of. Um, uh, and, but it is about going back to the text and thinking and seeing your way around it. And, and often the text will give you the answer. Um, and in the way that I, I think the score will give you an answer. Um, I mean, the one that's tricky, I think, is, uh, is opera. And I think there are quite a lot of operas that weirdly the stories become really irrelevant. And actually the production production feels like a separate thing to the music I, and I, I, I that's not always the case clearly because there are some brilliant directors people like Richard Jones and it's amazing are kind of squishing all together but sometimes uh, people just go to hear a singer sing something and that would never be true really of a ballet you wouldn't go just to see somebody do steps that have always been done in a certain way and ignore the production you kind of can't ignore the production because it's part of the way that the, the piece has been reinterpreted by a choreographer. So it's interesting what all those different, the different needs of all those things. And then working with film is an interesting one as well, because in film, you need to be ready, not as a director, but as a choreographer, which is similar to choreographing musicals and operas as well, and doing movement on plays, is you make stuff, but you have to be able to let go of it. Yeah. Because ultimately, there's only one person really in charge. And even when they're trying to make a team, you go, yeah, but you've got the last word. And I'm always fine about people going, I don't like it, do something else. Because we work in ideas, and so that's fine. Mm. You said it was going to be a one-minute answer, and I just, like, exceeded that by about 15. <laughs> that's okay. Don't worry. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, I'll shut up. Nothing to hear. Yeah. But, um, what some of our listeners won't necessarily know is Paul was was a dancer for you in a production two. once in two productions, two productions. Uh, yeah. a, a long time ago that makes you sound very very no, old no, no. when so was it 2000 2004 was my first one and will actually gave me my first job so oh yeah now that's so, interesting this is will's fault this is will's fault <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> in 2004 um I worked with Will on one touch of venus at opera north venus at opera north a kurt yeah. vaughan musical yeah so did you oh, Will? I did audition for Will. So that Will. leads yeah. ah, that leads us on to our next question, doesn't okay. it? Yeah. Go. On. Auditions. What do you look for in a dancer at an audition, what other than what obviously did you look, yes. Apart from good genius, looks. genius, and I, one rarely finds it since two thousand and four. Auditions. Auditions are funny old things. Um, the thing that about auditions is, I the way that I like to, and I hope I've got better at them since 2004, I don't, I don't know whether it was a horrible experience for you or not sure, um, is that uh, auditions are really scary to do uh, because you, you're you hoping you're going to get something. You don't know if you're going to do, do your best. You don't know what the other people are going to be like. You might never have met the person at the front of the room or you might have auditioned for them before and not got a job. So it can be a really kind of nerve wracking thing to do. And the thing, the first thing I try to do with an audition is make it not feel like an audition, but actually feel like a workshop. Um, but I don't, I, I don't do lots of really horrible tasks. I don't mean that tasking is horrible, but I don't get people to <laughs> always be like, 
and people just go just improvise and you're like i don't know what i'm supposed to be doing and it's that's it makes me even more nervous so it's basically the idea is that um i like to i like people that can work as a team and i would rather have somebody who is generous um and good rather than somebody who is a bit better as a performer or a technician and selfish uh, there's you you rely hugely when you're making a show on generosity of spirit from people and you never know there's always something that goes wrong when you're making a show there's always something that can bust somewhere that you lose a preview or all the lighting goes down and just before you open or you have to change everything because somebody gets injured or all of those things and it's at those moments you need your cast to be kind to each other and look after each other and also i like people that are prepared to give something a go but aren't prepared to look stupid because <laughs> that's i do i think it's i think it's um if people aren't prepared to try something that they've not done before then uh you'll get the thing that they gave you in the rehearsal room and you know they'll never push themselves further so when they get to shows they'll never find something else to develop it with and also the show you make is only down to the nature of the performers that you have so you want people that are good clearly technically you want people that are good but actually I, i'm horrible i always start with a ballet bar and generally by the end of tonjus you can tell the people that have technique yeah often by earlier than that yeah <laughs> um, and it's that really funny thing where some people you're not sure about some people you can be quite convinced about and then they they let go of a bar and just go <clears throat> and they fall and you're like okay you got me um and then you want people who so it's like I, sometimes in an audition you look and there's somebody teaching somebody who hasn't got an exercise the exercise and they're not friends and that person always goes up in my estimation there are also people that prepare to stop and go do you mind if i start again always go up in my estimation mm -hmm. um uh people that don't give up i really like um and people who don't undermine other people in the room mm -hmm. sometimes it's that funny thing where you kind of go i'm not quite sure why you're auditioning because you look like you don't want to be here yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah and like it's fine but i'm like you like you drag yourself all the way out and you come in and i and also i like to involve myself in the audition so i'm always killing myself at the front of a room and i'm like why am i really tired and you're not why am i sweatier than you I, come on <laughs> i think i just want people that want to work and i because also i think uh even though i was incredibly lazy a lot of the time in my career the thing that i think now is i'm only doing it because i get a kick out of it and if i didn't get a kick out of it i would genuinely do something else mm -hmm. and so i'm like i just want somebody who's up for it and into making a thing from nothing it's a bit like having a garden where you just go it's amazing planting stuff and watching it grow it's like making a show at the end of a good day's rehearsal making a show you can walk in and there's nothing at all existing and at the end of the day you walk out and there's like this intricate scene with stuff going on and so i think it's finding people that want to do that and that want to make work with each other and want to and want to make a dream a reality 